Baldur's Gate 3 would most likely not be a turning point for the game industry. I have to take you back to the origins of the modern online microtransactions debate. Microtransactions were always about one thing. Greed. They couldn't openly admit that they introduced a bunch of gambling-like features. Making money is not enough. Making all the money is what they want. Microtransactions are just too profitable. The internet is rife with excitement about the possibility of game companies viewing the tremendous success of Baldur's Gate 3 as the opportunity to invest in quality projects over microtransaction fests. Well, I'm here to explain some of the obstacles to this full throttle march towards quality. In my last video, I argued for why Baldur's Gate 3 would most likely not be a turning point for the game industry. The response I received may want to do a deeper dive into the game industry and the business behind microtransactions. Many people do not seem to understand how companies work under capitalism and what delivers revenue in the game industry. A common misconception that I imagine is shared widely is that video game companies actually believed the story they spun about microtransactions. To explain why this is a misunderstanding, I have to take you back to the origins of the modern online microtransactions debate. Disbelief as the game industry proudly boasts and gloats about the ways in which it psychologically hooks people into unethical, unnecessary, aggressive video game monetization. And the game award goes to, oh man, I have to pay a microtransaction to unlock. That's so <laughs> stupid that this has to, hold on, I got this guys, here we go. <laughs> you know it's true, it's, it's really stupid. Uh, the uh, winner, Wolfenstein 2, the new Colossus. <laughs> You see, in the late 2010s, YouTubers and websites began to turn against microtransactions. Commentators highlighted how they targeted addicts and children and also could lead to in-game mechanics being designed for the purpose of forcing in-game purchases over creating a compelling narrative and story. Under this pressure, the defenders of the industry and companies themselves all gave one standard response. Cost. They argued that too much quality control was just unprofitable. Microtransactions were necessary to fund the expensive graphics and features consumers expect of modern AAA titles. Some games media sites even bought into this narrative. They thought surely there's some credibility to this argument when studio closures and game budgets were exploding. But cost was never the main reason, and to accept this narrative buys into their framing and underestimates the difficulty of reviving story-driven content. You see, microtransactions were always about one thing, greed. When the microtransaction debate kicked off, they couldn't openly admit that they introduced a bunch of gambling-like features just to make more money than ever before. So they used the standard corporate excuse, cost. It was not that they were trying to make even more money, it was that AAA games were just too costly and they needed the extra billion. How else could Blizzard pay their heating bills other than to stuff their content full of loot boxes? But the reality is they just wanted more money. Nothing else, nothing more. The first microtransactions were introduced and they got a whiff of previously unimaginable profits. So naturally, what happened? Everyone piles in. It was never about the unprofitability of selling full price games. It was always about greed. Just look at popular franchises like GTA and COD. Not only were they realized as full price titles, but they both sold enough copies to recoup costs 10 times over. GTA 5 sold more hard copies than any game in history, becoming the most profitable entertainment product of all time. Its release generated such a frenzy that people were literally carrying out heists to get early copies and avoid the mile long lines on release day. So does it make sense the Rockstar saw this tremendous success and thought, and thought, we simply can't afford not to ply the game with microtransactions? No, of course not. Senior management saw the money they were projected to make and thought, why not make some more? And it's not just Rockstar. In 2019, EA revealed that 45% of their revenue comes from microtransactions. And this is the point I'm trying to make. If the big companies realize they can make tremendously absurd bucket loads of money from selling Baldur's Gate-like titles, they won't stop there. Your average CEO won't look at the sales and think, job done. They'll look at the new user base of 100 million and think, 
how do we monetize this? And consumers who are addicted to these products will swallow them up. So Baldur's Gate will not produce a blueprint to change this reality. Microtransactions are just too profitable. Companies aren't going to forego profits en masse to produce quality. Effort just doesn't yield the same as generic and predatory. So that's why regulatory change is necessary. And it's made easier by the fact that our government know the exact dangers of microtransactions as well as how to deal with them. They're just unwilling to do anything. The British government released a report in September 2019 through the Digital Culture, Media and Sports Committee on immersive and addicted technologies. This report called for regulations to be made to extend the 2005 Act to loot boxes. On top of this, a July 2020 House of Lords Committee report on gambling also called for loot boxes to be brought within the scope of the Act. The government response to these findings also accepted changes had to be made. But despite this, they've done nothing. They have accepted that measures need to be taken to reduce the ability of kids to purchase microtransactions and expand awareness of spending controls and transparent information. But in reality, they have done nothing. And that's the issue. Attacking developers for their supposed laziness or posting hate comments on every Ubisoft cinematic trailer won't make a difference without legislation. I truly wish this wasn't the case, but Baldur's Gate 3 will not change the reality that EA, Activision Blizzard, Ubisoft and Rockstar are just reaching larger audiences and extracting far more revenue than Larian ever will. Making money is not enough. Making all the money is what they want. And unless their pocketbooks are hurt, they don't care about bad press or internet buzzwords like quality control. Millions of kids will still buy FIFA and spend their parents' money on in-game purchases. And while that still happens, they will never change. And so, and so while there might be exceptions for titles like Baldur's Gate, most of the money in the industry will continue to funnel towards AAA money printers. Regulation also can't just be local, it has to be global in scope. Belgium provides a blueprint on why regulation must be global in scope. You see, in 2018, the Belgians decided to actually do something. Their gambling commission declared that all loot boxes that players can buy with real currency legally constituted gambling. It also disbarred game companies from applying for a license, which in effect banned loot boxes. However, did it work? No. Consumers were able to get around this ban using VPNs. One report found that 82% of the highest grossing iPhone games in Belgium continue to generate revenue by selling loot box products. Global regulation, particularly in the US and UK markets, could prevent this situation. So if you want to direct your legitimate anger against someone and legitimate fervor for quality products like Baldur's Gate 3, point it in the direction of the regulators.